Good morning and grand rising. It is another episode of the Hoodoo and Chill podcast. And today it is Wisdom Wednesdays. With me, as always, is my partner in crime, as well as love and light, the one and only, the beautiful Latoya Alexandria. Good morning. Good morning, Grand Rising. Good light. Um, bon dia, je suis ICC Vec, the Magnifique, Sir Bayo, my heart. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We are very excited about um, bringing you uh, this series that we call Hoodoo Voices. Today's show will contain an interview to showcase W, I'm sorry, E.W. Lindsay's practice. In today's Wisdom Wednesdays, we'll continue our journey with Hoodoo Voices. As I said, the series is dedicated to giving life to the forgotten and many unknown voices of Hoodoo. In this series, we're showcasing interviews conducted by Harry Hyatt Middleton in the 1930s. These interview excerpts are from an exclusive five volume series, Hoodoo, Conjuration, Witchcraft, and Root Work. While we appreciate the priceless resources of Hoodoo Black history, we here at Hoodoo Conjure Root Work LLC do not support or condone the manner in which this information was gathered and monetized for financial gain. We can, however, acknowledge Mr. Uh, Hyatt's extensive work as an essential resource. So let's get into it. Love this topic today. Love this interview today. I, I love when we do shows on Hoodoo Voices Toya because it's almost like we give the ancestors an opportunity to speak again, give them an opportunity to breathe life into us. And this particular interview, this particular worker is so special to me i i feel like we're connected at the hip or just somewhere um for those of you who do not know i am originally from virginia the richmond central area to be specific and i take a lot of pride in being where i'm from just due to the rich history that is associated with virginia a lot of people do not know that New Orleans was the largest port where the slaves were transported into the Americas, well, North America. However, only second to New Orleans, my hometown of Richmond, Virginia, came in second place when it came to the importation of Africans into this country, as well as Charleston, South Carolina. Now, Mr. Lindsay was originally from South Carolina. That's where he was born. But his practice and where he did his work as a hoodoo doctor was in the downtown Richmond, Virginia area. And to find this interview and to be able to give you guys this information, I'm so excited because I do feel like a lot of times Virginia is not given the credit that it's do when it comes to the history and the part we do play when it comes to hoodoo that this was a very very large practice and a thriving practice in the 30s in the early 1900s um in this specific area as well as virginia has a very rich hidden voodoo culture as well that a lot of people aren't aware of you would have to know to know mr Lindsay, in my opinion is just an amazing blueprint of what an authentic hoodoo worker was he doesn't hide who he is he is not ashamed of his personality um i and i just love that about him you know he wasn't all love and light he was very much a two-headed worker but he was so educated 
And I've done this show before, but we never recorded it. So today you guys get an opportunity to read this. We're also going to go ahead and actually send a copy of this interview if you want to just read it yourself. We're going to send this to you today. So if you have not subscribed to the Hoodoo Conjure Rootwork.com website, please do so. It's Hoodoo Conjure Rootwork.com. If we could get that link posted, go on the homepage, put your email in, and after the show today, we're going to actually send you a copy of this interview so that you can read this rich resource yourself and maybe gather some information as well. Today, the first excerpt that we're going to read is Toya is going to read the first excerpt where he explains his life. And then I'm going to go into detail with some more information that I've gathered about Mr. Lindsay and just about hoodoo culture in Virginia around that time as well. So Toya, without further ado, if you could please usher us in with our very first excerpt on Mr. Lindsay and his life. Greetings. This is LaToya from HCR Love and Light Ministries. Are you new to spirituality and seeking either guidance or mentorship? Or maybe you've been practicing for a while and you need a place to call home. We invite you to join our family. Go to hoodooconjurerootwork.com to join the largest and fastest growing hoodoo network around. Here at HCR, we promote spirituality as a lifestyle and cultivate authentic practitioners on all levels. Check out the website and see what works for you. Do you need a mentor? Are you seeking classes or just access to the best Hoodoo network available? We have a place for you. Join HCR Gold today. I'm out of a family. I'm a son of a mother that could even down tell you. She walk in here and call your name, telling you where you live, telling you your number of your house how many children you had, whether your wife was living or not, what kinds of hair she had, how old she was, what her name is. That's the kind of mother I had. The interviewer asked, where does she live? Greensboro, South Carolina. That's where I come from. I come from there, where root working and allied practices are known to be very best. There's going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I don't care what kind of spells on a person or how a person is suffering. I can walk in the house. I'll be in the house for five minutes. Not only that, I don't have to hardly even know the person. I can walk along the street and one look at a person and tell whether they're hurt or not. Well, I tell you, a person of that kind can see it. Yes, sir. A person of that kind can see it. A person of like myself, you see. I know you. You see. I know and then on top of my knowing, I know to do, I know what to do to break it up and what to cure it. You know, my mother and my father schooled me for seven years to make me a doctor. Thank you, Toya. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go into that very powerful, just rich excerpt that Toya just beautifully gave us. The very first thing that he brings up is that he's from Greensboro, South Carolina. A lot of people don't know that the Carolinas and Southern Virginia share a very rich culture when it comes to swamp culture. Uh, a lot of hoodoo is there. A lot of hoodoo is there. A lot of people that you find along uh, like Southampton and places like that, they the culture of Virginia in like Northern North Carolina, the, it's almost the same. And this is an area where he came from and where his mother came from. One thing that I do love as with all practitioners is the pride that we have from our hometowns and where we're from. And while this man had a thriving practice in Virginia, he gave so much respect as to where he came from. When he says where conjuring and root work and all of their allied practices are the best where they come from. Now, that portion of that statement makes me believe that he may have actually been from South Carolina because South Carolina has an amazing culture of hoodoo 
So once again, if somebody can confirm if there ever was a town of Greensboro, South Carolina, you would have my heart today. The next portion of this that I do want to talk about is just some of the terminology that he used. And just being from Virginia, I've heard somebody say things like this, that's a down tell a person, which is what we would say today to read a person um, or to pick up on their energy, to read their energy, read their spirit or to tell their fortune. That is what that saying means to down tell a person. He also uses the statement of the knowing. And that's very country. That's country. A lot of people deep in the hills and in the back countries of Virginia will use that statement, the knowing. And that is to describe a person who is gifted, someone who might be a medium, somebody who might be a psychic, somebody who might be a seer. Okay, and he speaks on the fact that his mother was a gifted woman who was either from North or South Carolina. She passed his gift, her gift along to him. Not only that, this was in his family. The last statement that Toya read when he said that his family train him specifically for seven years not to be a practitioner not to be a fortune teller not to be a witch whatever those terms he used a dignified term he said my parents trained me to be a doctor and mr Lindsay, i love you so much because i've said this to you all before that that is a word we as practitioners we as hoodoos conjurers root workers we have to reclaim that dignity i am a doctor i am a doctor of hoodoo i'm a doctor of medicine i'm a doctor of root work so i just want to uplift his spirit today and say thank you so much for reminding us of who we are this man said he had training for seven years from his family on how to be a doctor it's no different than someone paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to school for seven years to be what a doctor another statement that i think we all really need to focus on is his tenure and one thing that I love about these authentic practitioners and those from the early 19th century is they speak on their tenure, that they didn't just jump out there, that they trained under someone, that they were learned, that they studied, you know? And a lot of us, even to this day, we want to skip over the patience or the studying or the mastery of the skills that are required for us to be fluid practitioners. If you listen to a lot of these authentic workers from the early 19th century, or even some that are still alive today, they will always speak on their tenure and how they studied under someone, which brings us back to why mentorship is just so important. So, Toy is now going to take us into our next excerpt where Mr. Lindsay speaks on using the moon for spell work and removing jinxes. Hoodoo and Chill Podcast will return after this short ad break. There's a sacrifice that comes with this. And at the end of the day, we're given the choice of how we want to sacrifice and what we're sacrificing for and whether or not what we're sacrificing for is actually what we're supposed to be sacrificing for. Are we choosing the right path when we accept this proposal that has this bag attached to it? Are we doing that? Are you enjoying the show? If so, don't forget to follow Hoodoo and Shell on Apple and Spotify and leave us a five-star rating. 
Would you like to attend an uncut, unedited, live taping of Hoodoo and Chill podcast? Then don't forget to follow Hoodoo Conjure Root Work on the Clubhouse app and tune in live Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. Also, if you like the content and want to help our ministry grow, please support us by sending a donation of love. The link is in the podcast description. Now, back to the show. When you take these spells off, you have to work at the right time, the right season. That's it. The right time, the right season. The spell is put on a person when the moon is growing, when the sap is rising. That is when the spell is put on a person. And when the growing down of the moon and the moon is going out, you can take the spell off a person. But when the moon is a growing moon or new moon is growing, why you ain't doing nothing? You kind of relieve them, you know, give them relief from the pains. But you ain't doing no good. Let's focus right there on just that small excerpt of what Toy just gave us, okay? It goes back to another key element of this practice that I think many of us, either we have not correlated this type of discipline, or it is an unlearned trait that some of you have yet to master, which is the art of patience. Patience. Patience is a magic in itself, okay? Um, If you have your notes, you might want to write that down. But patience is a magic in itself. Having the discipline in yourself, the discipline in your actions, the discipline in your spirit, and most importantly, the discipline in your magic on to wait for when it is the right time. Now, I'm not going to say that all who do is revolving around different cycles of the moon. This was specific to Mr. Lindsay's practice and this is how he was taught. So I'm not going to utilize that or even put that out there as a standard for your practice because it will look differently just depending on who's doing the work. Some people may do work depending upon the sun, the day of the week. Some people may not focus on that at all, okay? But I want you to open up your mindset and look outside of the box of what he was saying. He worked alongside an energy that worked with him. Obviously, he had observed the moon. Obviously, through his observation and him doing certain workings, he was able to gather and see that, okay, so if I'm doing this around this time, it's going to work this way. And if I'm doing around this time, it's going to work this way. It speaks to his patience on waiting to the right time to move. It's the same thing even when you do your own spiritual work. You don't just jump up in the morning and say, I'm going to do something today. Or even if you're working for clients, if you're in that space, you don't move when they tell you to move. You move when your spirit, when your ancestors, when you know it's the right time, when you know that your energy is right, your magic is moving, it's flowing, it's the right season, whatever you're working with, you wait until it's the right time. Why? Because you want results. It's not about wanting to do magic because it's Monday and I feel good and I'm going to put some pretty candles together. No, it's about attaining the results that you're petitioning for or you're trying to attract. So I say all of this to say is to not just venerate his observation of moon cycles, but to really look at how disciplined this man was when it came to his work, that this wasn't for play play. These were not candle tricks. He really had it in his mind. He knew that he was a doctor, he was a healer, and he was going to do his work when it was the right time. And I hope that you all can take a lesson from Mr. Lindsay today and to not rush yourselves, to not rush your practice, 
to not rush your work or your results. It speaks to the faith and the confidence that this man not only had in his practice, but let's go deeper today in the elements, basically in God and in his ancestors. You don't have to use the moon, but Mr. Lindsay did because he believed in it. And it is through his belief, his confidence, his faith in energies that are real, those energies are working with him fluidly. It speaks to the level of education, celestial observation that our ancestors had, that some of you are so astrology crazy or so good at it because people seem to think that this wasn't something that we have been doing since before we touched this land that we as a people have always looked at the stars. What not a better place to observe the sky and the moon and the cycles of the sun or the moon than in Africa, than from the plains and from the deserts where the sky is clear and you can see everything and every single star. Our people, were astronomers and astrologists before we got to this land. For those of you who know the story of the Amistad, when they took over the ship, the slaves could not navigate. However, they knew that they came from the land of the rising sun and they said, sail that way. Do not downplay your ancestors or yourselves because everything that you're doing is something that we have been doing for centuries. It is only a reincarnation of energy being mounted and channeled through you. The way that you said um, our ancestors were astrologists and astronomers, and this is so true. This is not something that's new age or new to us. And um, it's something that we need to really tap into. So I just thought that was so beautiful. Okay, so the next excerpt is going to be about jinx removal and how Mr. Lindsay explained you would remove a jinx. Bitter apple, dig me up some bitter apple. I look around and get some gold of earth. Then I goes and get some runny barrel root. And when you get these herbs to take spells off people, you gets the herbs off each bush, roots of each bush, a root going east, a root going south, and a root going west. And take those roots off of those bushes, carry them home and put them in the stove and let them dry out. You don't make herb tea out of them with a sap in them, you dry the cap or the sap out. Then after you dry the sap out, after they become dry, you boil the water. For taking off of a spell, you don't boil your herbs, you soak them. Soaks that strength out of those herbs. Then you take the herbs out and put them on against the boil, that's it. If you got aches and pains, or if you draw it up, see, you bathe in them. Bathe them in that tea. And when you bathe in them, in that tea, you make your wishes. Of course, everyone has his. God gives in time for his wishes. The first portion of this, and I love it because it breaks down how spiritual baths and remedies are made and how he did them. And I don't know if you were doing this, but you know, 
and I'm, I don't want to say the proper way, but if you want to see a different effect in your spiritual baths, I will say um, either boiling the herbs or soaking them in the water, in some boiled water first, you will definitely see a different effect. Like if you're not charging your baths or and all of that stuff before, prior to use, you may want to start implementing this in your practice. OK, and a lot of I love the fact that he used the word T because that is a word that is interchangeable among, amongst hoodoos. Um, they will tell you to drink the tea, bathe in the tea. But basically, it is the same thing as, quote unquote, a spiritual bath. But some of these they made that you could actually consume. OK. So there is another portion of the bath I'm going to read before. Uh, Seer continues on. See, well now, when you bathe the person in that, you don't use no soap. Don't use no washing powder. You use pepper. You use salt. Salt green. You use vinegar. Then after you bathe them in that water, anoint them down. You anoint them down with any kind of, with any kind you see. Anything like camphor oil or anything like big salve or castor oil. You anoint them down and just after they bathe, anoint them. You don't rub hard. You take the bath water and carries it to the hydrant, which is the faucet, and turn the hydrant on. Let the water run, the hydrant water. And you pour the water in there until the stream made by the running hydrant. You don't throw it on the ground. You pour it in the running water. You can carry it to a brook or a creek if you ain't got no hydrant or spring or spring that is running. And the same way you run the water from the hydrant, then you bury the rag that you anoint them with. Thank you so much, Toya. So back to the second portion of this, which he's speaks on how he actually does his spiritual baths with removing a jinx or removing a hex or whatever you call it, okay? So let's just revisit this. He says, you don't use washing powder when you are doing a spiritual bath, okay? He's using pepper, salt, salt brine, B-R-I-N-E, for those of you who've never heard of it before, you, it's country stuff, a lot of people who fish use it, vinegar as well. OK, so what you're going to do first is that same tea that you could drink, you're going to bathe in that as well. OK, but as you wash the person, you're going to wash them with a solution of pepper, salt, salt brine and vinegar. And you're going to wash them in a downward motion. OK, that's one thing that he didn't speak on in this, but you will wash this person in a downward motion, head to feet, toes, the whole thing, every portion, washing them in a downward motion. OK, and then when you bring them out of the water, you're going to anoint them. I love the fact that he basically said, use what you have. You could use camphor oil. He used Vicks. I've heard some of you speaking on using Vicks. Um, my grandmother used to anoint us with Vicks. That's so funny. I just thought about that. Castor oil. Um, my mom used to anoint us with castor oil. My grandma used Vicks and my mom did use castor oil. That's funny. And you're going to anoint them. But when he does it, you're going to use a rag, not your fingers. This is what he's using, like a little rag. Put the crosses on them, however you are taught to anoint the person. And then he says, you're going to take the bath water and you're going to pour it in a hydrant. He's country. It's nothing more than a sink or running water. Okay. I just love how Mr. Lindsay just gives us so many different variations on to just use what you have. You can go to a brook, you can go to a stream, um, you can, you know, flush it down um, the sink as the water's running. But basically, as long as it is running water, you can dispose of this bath to get the job done. And I just love him for that. He's just so used what's available for you. But a hydrant is the same thing as a sink. All right. And then once you're done, he says, you take the rag that you've anointed the person or yourself with, and you are going to bury it. Now, if you read this interview, he goes into depth on where to bury the rag, how to fold it up and all of that. 
I'm not going to give all of that out. Like I said, if you are interested in getting this interview or just reading over this yourself, please, once again, go to hoodooconjurerootwork.com. On the homepage, use, I'm sorry, on the homepage, please put in your email. And after the show today, we will send you over a copy of this for your repertoire and also for your reading pleasure. Toya, did you have anything you wanted to add before we go into this story? I just wanted to touch on the fact that we were having a conversation about how powerful Vicks and castor oil is. And, you know, it just speaks to the, um, how we are, we're actually root working and we were actually anointing and we have been doing this for some time. And a lot of times we didn't understand exactly what our grandmothers are doing and our great grandmothers, what they were actually doing root work in themselves. So I always say, if you have, you know, keep Vicks, keep uh, castor oil. These things are very, very powerful, believe it or not. And um, these are things that you can just keep in your repertoire. I just love the fact that he's using those things. I mean, most of us who are listening right now have used them in some capacity. We've had them, you know, our parents have used them, our grandparents have used them. So they are very powerful tools. Um, We use them for lamps. So I think this is just wonderful. I love the fact that he is he's using things like Vicks and things like castor oil. All right. Well, I want you all to just sit back and relax for a few moments. I am going to now read to you a few stories from Mr. Lindsay's own mouth on just a couple of situations and things that he's done and just working with his own clients. So forgive me if I make any mistakes. Once again, we are reading these interviews directly as they were written, which were in the original dialect of the people uh, that Mr. Hyatt interviewed. So I do want to commend him at least keeping the dialect original. All right. Thanks for listening to the show. Do you like what you hear? Well, we want to hear from you. Join the Hoodoo Conjure Root Work Discord server. Use the link in the show description to join the official Hoodoo Conjure Root Work Discord group chat. See you there. Well, say for instance, if you and I had some disagreeableness about stock, your chickens or something, well, might probably now you're going to have me indicted for it. I want to go down to court. I'm going to put you on a hole now. Accidentally, let's just say, that I'm due to be indicted. Well, now here I'm going down to court. Before I go to court, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in the swamp, give me some man conquer, and give me a little piece of man conquer, which goes in my shield. I'm a shield man. I'm a shield man. I go as a shield. And I don't buy nobody, no way, law, judge, or nobody. Nothing hurting me but a lick, a brick, back, pistol, or knife. See, because I go as shield. I go as every day of my life because on account of my enemies. And I go as in the swamps and I get my herbs. You know what I go in for? I go as in the old fields and I get my herbs. And I know what I go and get. I keeps these with me. They're supposed to be in a bottle. I dropped my bottle and broke it. Those are different kind of herbs. This here, this a Jerusalem bean. That's for luck and gambling. This is double shoestring. That's a piece of high John the Conqueror. That's a piece of blood root. And this here, this is Samson, or Samson snake root. This here ball, or what we call life everlasting. Now this right here, see what this is? You see this little small piece? Why, that's a piece we call 
devil's bit. Devil's what? Devil's bit. That's a root. I've got over nine different herbs in here. Now, I'll go get nine different herbs that I have. You see, I carry this daily. You can smell the perfume on them. I carry this daily. Carries it on me. That is, I had it just because I was coming up here just to see you. There's my fish in my reels, everything right there. I've got about 16 pounds of fish hanging on the porch right over there. Near, near my fishing tackle. That's the reason why I'm not changing no clothes. Well, now I can take this for instance. Well, I've got a bootlegged joint. The law coming. And just to let y'all know that last piece, he basically was saying that he got 16 pounds of fish that he done left somewhere and his protection magic is so strong that he's not worried about anybody stealing his fish. I know that was a little hard to understand on that last portion, so I just wanted to make sure y'all understood what he was trying to say. But anyway, back to this. Well, now I can take this for instance. I've got this a bootlegging joint. The law coming. I get a tip off the law coming to my house. I got liquor in my house. The law can walk in here. Well, they say, what's going on here, Lindsay? Good morning, Captain. What's going on here? Not a thing. I've got a search warrant. Well, all you got to do is search, Captain. If you got it, I can't help you find it. I can't hinder you from searching. While he's going to search him, well, well when, he's in, when he enters in here, as soon as he gets the center of my house to search, well, his eyes finally get scattered. You know why? The interviewer says no. Well, sir, because I keeps my red pepper burning and my soft and my old shoes. And I keeps my head on all perfume. Keeps my house decorated. Decorated means that he keeps his house worked with protection magic. Say, for instance, if a fella coming in here now, he wants to put hard luck on me. Every morning when I get up, I does this. Now at my home, when I get up in my home in the mornings, when I arise, I arise in the mornings at five o'clock, seven o'clock. You come to my house, my house done been swept up. My red pepper and salt, and salt it done been sprinkled around. Well now, if you got anything to drop down in there, it don't take no effect on me. No sir, that don't take no effect on me at all no suck what he's saying is in other words people were known for coming to your house and you know leaving stuff at your house that might you know cause you bad luck or something to harm you what he's saying is that you can come over to his house and do whatever it is that you want to do it's not going to take no effect on me because i've already taken care of that in other words i was going to say again i get up every morning walk around my door stuff such a thing as a man can walk to your house if he can get your hair or he can get your foot track. If he can get my foot track, it don't take no effect either. You know why? I dress in my shoes, I wear on my feet. I walk over, it don't take no effect on me. I dress my track, my shoes are dressed. If it don't take no effect, how I keep my shoes dressed? Keep my shoes full of red pepper and salt and sulfur, you see? Keep my good old mold, high John the Conquer in my pocket. If I go to a man's house, he think he my enemy. I got a little piece of that in my mouth chewing it. Spinning my hand before I put my hand on his doorknob. If I visit anybody's house, I don't care where it is. Even out to my sweetheart. And that's the reason why you see I keep it handy. I put a piece of it in my mouth and I chew on it all the time. I can drink anything. I love this man. I, I love this man and 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 I, I i i love talking about him and i know he gave y'all a lot of work i know he gave y'all a lot of work but the truth is some of that stuff you won't be able to find some of those roots like uh i know running briar and stuff like that is only in the carolinas and virginia it doesn't grow everywhere but let's look past that right this man was so confident in his magic this man was so two-headed in his magic. This man had already done every protection working that he needed to do. That He basically was laughing in your face saying, I don't care. Try me. And and I, I, I feel like this is my, I don't mind, my uncle or something from somewhere far away because I'm the same way. 
And this is why I love Hoodoo. This is why I love the two-headedness of this because it showcases a different face. The men, how powerful and strong and protective and confident the Hoodoo men were. Not taking nothing away from the divine feminine, but today I am going to advocate for the Hoodoo men and give them a voice and give them a life today. Because these kings, these real kings, these doctors were so smart, crafty. You know how, you know how crafty he was? How discerning this man was? He knew what he did. I, mean, I got enemies. I wake up before any of y'all wake up. Real hoodoo man wake up three, four, five in the morning. Wink. Before you even got to my house, I done swept it, laid my tricks. I'm good. I'm walking in confidence of my ancestors and my magic that I wouldn't care what you're trying on me. It's not taking no effect. Some of you really could learn something from Mr. Lindsay's, not only from his work, but from his confidence and his faith and his knowing in who he was. In the 1930s, where A, therapy was very limited, if available at all, B, you probably could not get it because you were black. C, there probably were no black therapists within 100 miles of where he was living anyway. And you mean to tell me a man living during segregation couldn't even sit on the same bus or go in the same store as a white person was walking around in this much confidence and knowing in who he was and who his parents were and what he knew. It's a lot of us that don't even have it half as easy as what this man had to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. This man has so many enemies, he got up every morning at four in the morning to make sure that he was good. And still walked around with the, with this head held up high. You can hear it in his voice and how he's speaking. The confidence that he had in himself. Where's yours? As we always say, are you hoodoos or not? I would just like to thank you for the way that you read that excerpt. Because honestly, you read it as if he was right here with us. The amount, like Sear said, the amount of confidence in this man. And I love the fact that we are talking about the masculine because we do not uplift the masculine enough in these hoodoo workings and give them a voice. There's more about the feminine out there. These hoodoo men, I don't know about you feminine ladies, but I would have loved to have a man like Mr. Lindsay on my side. Can you... Imagine in the 30s being a woman in the 30s and having a man like that to help protect you, to help teach you, to help guide you. I mean, it just, it, it speaks to the type of masculine most of us as feminines are looking for. Mr. Lindsay had that. He had that. An amazing practitioner, a confident man who knew his purpose and walked in his purpose every day, got up and did what needed to be done to take, to take, take care of himself and take care of those who were around him. Like Sarah said, we can learn a lot from him. He took care. He was mindful. He was crafty. And like I said, I don't know about you, but I would have loved to have a hoodoo man, a real hoodoo man like him by my side. Thank you, my love. So I'm going to go into this last excerpt for you all. And then I challenge you all to read Mr. Lindsay's story in his interview. It's beautiful. It is powerful. And I just thank him so much to your spirit, sir, for just, I don't know what came over you that day, 
to sit with that white man and give him your words, but we appreciate you. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for just even walking on the same soil that I walked on. And I'm honored to be able to lift you up again today because you really deserve it. So in his last story, he talks about a client that he had who was dealing with elder abuse. I'm working on a case right now. 119 and a half Wesley Street. An old man, 74 years old, lives in a house with a fella that's all the time putting stuff down, which is laying tricks or laying powders and stuff. He gets so that he couldn't get up. And when I when he helped him up, he couldn't stand up. He couldn't even hold his water. He's just the same as a newborn baby. And so when he told me, he called me. Fletcher Powers is his name. He told me, he, I says, well, I'm going to get up and see you. I says, I'm coming around here to bathe your feet. I'll bathe your feet, I says. In this house, I says, when I dress this house, I says, if it's true, I says, you will have no trouble. And I goes to work. I goes down to the drugstore and gets me a box of sulfur. Goes to the store and gets me a box of cayenne pepper and some salt brine. I goes out on the hill. What? Fresh fish salt brine. Salt brine from salted fish. That's what I gets. Gets me a bottle of vinegar. I goes out there on the hill and fields and I digs my herbs. I goes back and boils them. Trims him off, bathes him his knee from his knees down. The interviewer asked, "What sort of herbs? What did I get? Running briar, pope, pope berry, or pope wood reed? I'm sorry, pope weed root." And he's up walking and goes all up yonder on the railroad track now, picking up coal every morning of his life. And after no sooner than I get him up, the fella told him he wanted his room. He couldn't rent it out no longer and told him he wanted them to keep me away from him. He was going to these so-called said to be conjurers and getting dust and stuff. And I found stuff between the mattress while he was out at work. So after I cut my cards, found out where the stuff was, why well, I went on and get it. The interviewer asks, cut your cards. Cut my cards. Run a deck of cards. I can run a deck of cards and tell you anything you want to know. Yes, sir. The interviewer asks, well, what did you find out? I found out where he had put it. Now, listen, I want to tell you. I can take a deck of cards and tell anybody more than they want to know. Now, only take a deck of cards. I can tell anybody more than anything they wants to know. You guys, first of all, thank you, Mr. Lindsay, again. And thank you all for just allowing us to give these ancestors a voice once again on this series we like to call Hoodoo Voices. Mr. Lindsay was a two-headed man, but he also had a heart. This man was 72 years old, and somebody was working dark magic, black magic on him just so they could rent out this man's room, trying to kill this man so they could take a room. And Mr. Lindsay did what he needed to do and helped the man out because he knew he needed him. Which speaks to the two-headedness of our practice and also our responsibility that when spirit puts it on your heart to help, you help. I love how Mr. Lindsay gave light to cardamancy and why I love the craft and why I'm so passionate about it because it was an authentic method of divination for our people. They did not have access to tarot cards. 
they did have playing cards and they did use them. And I love just how confidently he spoke about Carter Macy. I can tell you more than what you want to know. I feel like, I mean, it's like, these are things that I've said out of my mouth before even reading the words of this man. It just speaks to how truly reincarnation is working in our own lives. And we could just take a moment to acknowledge it and to see it and to truly be appreciative that these ancestors are working and speaking through us. That they have your attention. That they're trying to show you what it is to do, where to go, where to find it. How Mr. Lindsay went to the stores and got some things that he needed, but then he went out and he forged as well and found what he needed. And in not one portion of this excerpt or this interview, do you hear this man speak unconfidently about who he is? Who cares about the workings that we just had today? If you take anything from this message today, I want you to take Mr. Lindsay's confidence in who he was, his faith in his practice, his faith in his ancestors and his mother and his father and how he believed in what they showed him and how he honored them by using it. Where's your faith and where's your confidence in who you are? Because if our ancestors in the midst of segregation and slavery and turmoil and trauma can lift their heads up high, what's stopping you? This has been a magnificent interview. And I would just like to say thank you, Dr. Lindsay. We appreciate you. We venerate you, we honor you, and thank you for being, for coming through. And reincarnation is real. And if you don't know Mr. Lindsay, then get in touch with Sear Bayo because we have our own Mr. Lindsay right here. If you wanna really know about Mr. Lindsay, get closer to Sear. That is our Mr. Lindsay in present day. You all, as always, this this has been an amazing show today. I really appreciate just allowing uh, Mr. Lindsay's spirit to come through and just mount not only myself, but you as well, Toya. I appreciate you all for just lending us not only your ear, but your precious, unrenewable time today. As always, take more from the message than just the surface level workings the work is just a blueprint you all are scholars and doctors in your own right you are going to create your own so if you sat here and the only thing that you got from this message was running by and salt burn and this and that then you missed out today we're inspired to remind yourself about who you are and not only remind yourself, but walk in it. If you today can lift your head up just a little bit higher, if you today just feel even a little bit more fuel than what or love than what you felt for your ancestors before, then you got what you came here for and what we want to give you all today. Not just the how to. There are too many how to guides out here that claim to be hoodoo, conjure, and root work, but not enough why. Not enough dissecting of what is really going on here. Not enough inspiration, and definitely not enough acknowledgement of the foundation. And acknowledging also the evolution that you all are creating. I want you each today to step out into your confidence, not just your prosperity, your confidence today. 
I want you to be more confident today in yourself than where you ever have been before. The next time that you go into work or to ritual or even just to lay a simple offering on your altar to your ancestors, I want your confidence to be through the roof. Your faith to be through the roof that they're listening, that they're loving, that they are responding to you that this work that you're doing is powerful and it is going to work. As always, my people, you are strong. You are powerful. You come from the best of the best. Your bloodline is divine. Each and every last one of you have a magic that is unblocked and it is fluid and your ancestors are at your altars waiting on you. You come from kings, queens, doctors, warriors, and so on and so forth. So with that, thank you all for being here today. And we release you into the atmosphere. Go to hoodoo to join the largest and fastest growing hoodoo network. 